I got so the last apparently the audio the ten the ten minute audio clip of this the miracles uh, argument by you know Hume's miracle argument was defunct. So we're correcting that right now. Just a ten minute clip there. All right. So now let's look at the Scottish skeptic David Hume's argument. Now his argument is is uh, a little more nuanced because it's not quite so radical yet it's just as powerful in its intended effect. So Hume's argument is essentially gonna say this. I'm not gonna say that miracles don't happen. Maybe they do. But my argument, if it works, is just to say that even if miracles do happen, you shouldn't believe them, unless you wanna be uncounted as wise. You're not a wise man if you believe them. So obviously, right off the bat, we see why this uh, argument is just as powerful, yet not so radical, because Hume is not even claiming the impossibility of saying the miraculous. He's just trying to claim that it may happen. I'll give you that. And remember, when you're in an argument and somebody concedes one of your major points and then says, and you're still wrong, and this is why, that's kind of a scary thing. So Hume says, here's, here's, let's just go ahead and do his argument. He says, a natural law is by definition just a regular occurrence. He says, a miracle, just by definition, is something that happens rarely. Now, a wise man is always going to proportion his belief to evidence. He's going to proportion his belief to the greater amount of evidence, always, if he's going to be wise. Now, here's the catch. There's always going to be more evidence for the regular, for the natural law, for the regular occurrences, than there ever will be for the rare, or for a miraculous occurrence. Therefore, a wise man should never believe in miracles. You catch that? So let's just, maybe we should, let's just try to put that in layman's terms. Layman's terms. If, you, if you are a wise man, you're always going to have this, this, this belief system at play or at work that's going to go with where evidence goes. If I see a miracle, that's fantastic. But what I've just seen is rare. All of my life experience, you may even say all of the experience we have collectively as humankind is going to argue against what you just saw. Say, a man levitating or whatever the case may be. So, even though he may have legitimately levitated or done whatever, all of this vast experience backs up the claim, backs up the premise that no matter what you see right here, the evidence will always be greater than somebody actually did this over here. Whatever that particular uh, miracle may be. Levitation, rising from the dead, uh, water into wine, whatever it may be. Our life experience, our experiences in humankind, has always, the evidence is always going to be greater than this particular one little rare occurrence that just happened to happen. Therefore, if you're wise, maybe a miracle, but if you're wise, you're not even going to believe that because the evidence is just not there for it. Now, we see why this argument is so powerful because it takes a step back and concedes, yeah, miracles may happen. But if you're intelligent, you're not going to believe that. Now, our first clue should be at least to the effect of uh, the first red flag rather should be wait a minute any argument that a priori right out right from the onset any argument that says don't believe what you just saw that in and of itself should probably be a red flag that there might possibly be something wrong with that particular argument so for instance imagine that you are uh, on an island somewhere no one else is around and your best friend gets up and starts flying around in circles in the aisle, on the island, well, yes, uniform experience would seem to be that people can't fly, no argument there. But is it really more, is it really intelligent at that point to say, he's really not flying? Now that's not to say you don't investigate it, you try to go through every possible scenario that you can, but at the end of the day, if there's no explanation, are you really crazy to believe that he's flying around? Well, I would say, yeah, you probably are crazy. But in that context, uh, we would at least, at the very least, have to take that seriously. But forget that, that's not even our point. Our point is gonna be really to say this. Hume's premise, one of Hume's premise is wrong. Sometimes the evidence for the rare is greater than the evidence for uh, the occurring over and over and over. So for instance, let's just look at one point. Let's say that, uh, somebody hits a hole in one in golf. Well, let's say that guy has never hit a hole in one in golf, ever. Let's say that it's the first golf game in the history of whatever. Let's say that since the time that golf has, has began, 
from the time from the time that it's been played, no one has ever hit a hole in one. Let's say that a bunch of people are standing around, they watch it, they see the ball, they go in the hole, they see it go in the hole, and everybody says, wait a minute, wait a minute. We just saw something that's literally never happened in the entire history of the universe. We can't believe that. Well, no, at that point in time, because of the context of the surrounding situation, the evidence is greater that this actually happened. Or look at it this way. A lot of our forensic sciences or uh, things that deal with the past, historical studies, they can never be repeated. History itself has only happened once throughout the period of what? History. It's happened once. Yet we're reasonable to believe that those particular things happened. Or let's say that your own birthday, you were, your, your birthday, you being born is an astronomically crazy event that can't be replicated, yet it happened once, it won't happen again, yet you're sane to believe that you actually had a birthday at one point. Um, or let's look at it this way, what about the origin of life, period? However it started, whether we want to say, you know, God, whether we want to say some evolution, evolutionary type uh, methodology, whatever, it only happened once. We don't see life popping into existence from non-life. So even that could have only happened once, yet we should say, well, we can't actually believe uh, that life actually arose. So we see that that really is not necessarily true, that the evidence is always greater for the uh, regular than it is for the rare, because we have to look at the context of the situation. Now, if you want to study this in great detail, there's, a, there's something called Bayes' theorem. And Bay, what Bayes' theorem does is it just goes through a complex mathematical formula, for lack of better uh, words there, lack of better terms, that just shows, it tries to place all of these things in context uh, to show you why, uh, to give you even a greater de depth of understanding why the evidence a lot of times is greater for that particular occurrence than it would be necessarily for uh, uh, the, the regular occurrences. Now here, here's another point uh, that uh, Dr. Geisler brings up. If a miracle by definition is rare, well, you can't punish it for being rare. Because, of course, if it happened all the time, it wouldn't be a miracle. No one would have any reason to believe that something happened uh, supernaturally or for whatever other purpose. It has to be rare so that it will be seen to be something that goes against a normal occurrence to prove what it's trying to prove. You can't punish it for being rare. That's Dr. Gosling's point. Now, C.S. Lewis actually goes straight at the heart of, of, of Hume's argument, and this, this to me is one of the most persuasive uh, arguments against Hume. Lewis just basically says this. He says, Hume is arguing in a circle. He says, because every time a miracle would happen, you already have to assume that that couldn't happen. But if you already assume that that couldn't have happened, well then no, of course no miracle can ever happen because you can never count any evidence for that particular miracle no matter how far back you go because you're always going to assume that the other miracles are not true saying that uniform experience has counted against those so you can never actually make a case for any miracle no matter how far back you go because you're always having to assume that the other miracles previously are false as well well of course if no miracles happen well then it's no surprise that no miracles have ever happened, or that you shouldn't believe any miracles. So I'd like to share that uh, quote from you from Lewis because he articulates his point very finely because it's in the form of uh, uh, just written, it's just written down, which collects his thoughts very carefully. So let's read that. This is what Lewis has to say. He says, Now, of course, we must agree with Hume that if there is absolutely uniform experience against miracles, if, in other words, they have never happened, why then they never have. Unfortunately, we know the experience against them to be uniform only if we know that all the reports of them are false. And we can know all the reports to be false only if we know already that miracles have never occurred. In fact, we're arguing in a circle. All right, guys, so in conclusion, I want to say this because... All right, guys, so that's roughly that video. That's the audio there. Um, and again, you don't necessarily have to know the, again, the... Um, the rest of this particular video. We're just interested in the remarks about Hume and his miracle. Sorry about the audio disturbance there, and that should conclude this lecture. See you next time, guys.